Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Corey. In this video, we're going to see how we can create a custom image classifier without writing any code by using Hugging Face Auto Train. So this will allow us to automatically categorize images that have been uploaded to our application or our system. So as the name suggests, Auto Train is a tool to automatically train and later deploy machine learning models. Uh, basically, all we need to do is upload a folder of images, and a little while later, we have an API endpoint that we can call to classify new images. So for this tutorial, we'll be classifying images of different types of clothing, but your images could be whatever you're interested in, whatever domain you're working in. So here's a quick outline of the video. First, we'll talk a little bit about the difference between AutoML platforms like Hugging Face Auto Train compared to traditional ML deployments. Uh, then we'll look at how we can quickly assemble a data set of images using Google Cloud Platform and a custom search engine. And then finally, we'll look at how we can create and run a Hugging Face Auto Train project. So by the end of it, we'll have an API that we can call. We can send an image to it and get a prediction back about what category that image belongs to based on our training data. So first, let's look at the value proposition of Auto Train and similar tools and talk about why you might consider using something like this. With traditional ML development, the process looks something like the path along the top of the diagram in blue. So first you collect your data, then you train a model on your data, and finally you deploy it as an API to be called by some other part of your application or perhaps someone else's application. Uh, this is an oversimplification of the process, but even in this schematic view, uh, those two blue boxes hide a lot of complexity. So to train a model, you'll need to have access to GPUs or graphics processing units, either physically or in the cloud. You'll need to configure your training environment with CUDA drivers and a deep learning framework like PyTorch or TensorFlow or FastAI. Um, you may need to know how to design neural network architectures if you're doing research, or if you're doing engineering, you may need to know how to adapt existing architectures. You'll need to know how to write training code to run your data through your network, and so forth. Once the training is done, or at least one pass of it is done, because typically you do many passes of training and generate lots of models in the process, but we'll assume you're just doing one for now, uh, you'll move on to deployment. So to deploy a model in production, which typically means exposing it as an API, you'll likely need to know how to spin up and configure cloud servers, like exposing ports and so forth. You'll need to know how to install and configure a web server like Nginx or Apache. You'll need to know how to write API code in some framework like FastAPI or ExpressJS to authenticate and process your incoming requests and return response data as well as how to handle various other back-end tasks like downloading model artifacts to your server from wherever you might be storing them, communicating with external databases, and so forth. With an auto ML platform like AutoTrain, those two parts of the pipeline are abstracted away. So you no longer need to learn how to do those two different types of tasks, the training and the deployment, nor do you have to execute them for a particular project. So learning those skills takes time, and so does executing those particular skills for a project. So that's roughly the value proposition of AutoTrain or similar platforms, is that it, it takes away the time to learn and deploy those skills. So now with that introductory preamble out of the way, let's look quickly at how we can create a custom image data set with Google Cloud Platform. So you may already have your own data set that you're bringing to this project, and so you could skip this part. If you're not and you're just looking to play around, I'll show you how you can set up a custom search engine on GCP, and, and I'll share some code that you can use to run that easily by just substituting a couple values. So you can find the homepage for the custom search engine service from Google here at programmablesearchengine.google.com. Uh, to create one, log into GCP and create a new project. And then after you create a project, switch to it. Uh, then we'll need to enable the custom search API to be able to use it with this project. Um, once it's enabled, you can click Try in API Explorer, and it will redirect you to the documentation for the service. Um, in order to use the service, or any other GCP service, we'll need an API key, and we can generate one by clicking Get a Key here. After that, we want to go to the Programmable Search Engine Control Panel and create our search engine. So click Add, give it a name, select search the entire web, toggle image search and save search if you wish, 
uh, complete the captcha to prove that you're a human and then click create once you've done that you can see your custom search engine url and your id now so that url there shows you how to embed the search engine into a web page which is not what we're going to do we're going to use it um, in the back end as an api and so we'll look at that in a minute so you could grab the id from here or you could click customize below and see it on the dashboard view like this so you'll need this id as well as your api token in order to make api calls later so now we can grab some code that will allow us to call our search engine I've shared a couple of short scripts on GitHub that you can use in this repo here, uh, which is linked below as well. To, to use these scripts, uh, after you've set up your search engine, uh, clone this repository, install the requests package in a virtual environment or what have you, uh, and insert your own API key and search engine ID into the files. So let's quickly look at how you would do that. Uh, so first we clone the repository, uh, then we create a virtual environment and here we're using Python Venv, uh, the module. You could also use Conda. You might be doing this in a Docker image or what have you. Um, we'll activate our environment and then we'll install requests, which is what we use to actually call the endpoint. Once you have requests installed, um, open either file and add your API key and custom search engine ID. Uh, I don't show that here, but you'll see it marked in the file. You'll also likely want to set image limit to 100, which is the maximum results that your custom search engine will return for a given term. So look for the line that says while the len of image URLs is less than 10 and change that to whatever you like. It's set to 10 for testing, but you probably want to bump it up when you're gathering your data. Note that multiple runs with the same query term will return the same 100 images. So if you need more than 100, try modifying the search term and adding descriptors. So for example, in our case, we could use terms like red shirt, blue shirt, and red dress, blue dress to expand the size of our data set. So once you've made these three changes with your API key, your search engine ID, and the number of images you want to return, then you can run one of the files. Note that both files do roughly the same thing, but imagedownloader.py is shorter and simpler, whereas the other one is a bit more robust. So then after you've run this file, or if you've brought your data from elsewhere, what we're going to do next is create and run a project on Autotrain. So what we'll do is we will upload our data to the platform and Hugging Face will generate five models. It will train five models against our data and give us back five API endpoints that we can call. So let's see how we can do that. So first we'll go to huggingface.co, click solutions, and then auto train. And note that you'll need a Hugging Face account to use this service. So log in or sign up if you haven't already. Next we'll click new project. We'll name our project, select vision as our task, and leave model choice automatic. Note that you can specify specific models you'd like to train by selecting manual and search for the name of the architecture you'd like to use, like ResNet or Vision Transformer, uh, but we'll leave it as auto for now. Then we'll click create project and this will take a minute or two to finish. And the next step is to upload our data. So you can upload your data in one of two formats, either organized by folder with each folder containing images of a single label or you can upload it with metadata in the form of a CSV or JSON file that specifies a label for each image that you're uploading. We'll use option one based on how we gathered our data with our search engine. And note that you can either drag and drop your files onto this drag and drop area or you can click to upload. Uh, you can see here the structure of the data set that I'm using. So there are dresses, coats, and sweaters as the three labels. You can click on the card to see the data set details and files. And at this point, AutoTrain will prepare our data for us. So this may take a long time, possibly several hours. So come back to this later and we can go over to trainings to see whether our project is ready to start training or not. Um, if it's not, you'll see this message here. So once our data is ready, we can come to the trainings tab and start the training job. So first we'll select the number of models we want AutoTrain to train. We'll leave it as the default of five. And we can also see here the total number of images we'll be training on, so 231 in our case, and the cost of this project. So because we're under the limit of 500 images on the free tier, uh, it shows us that our training job will be free. So finally, we'll click Start Models Training, and the five models will start to train. So this step took about five minutes for this data set. If you have a larger data set, it will, of course, take a bit more time. Um, and you'll see the starting up training jobs for a little bit and then you'll start to see the cards shuffle around as the models start to train and these cards will show you the model ID and the progress of training. Once the training is done you'll see what level of accuracy each of the models reached and we can see here that some of our models were trained to nearly 98% accuracy which is really impressive. 
So if we click on a model card, we can see more details and results about the training job. And then at the bottom, we can click view on model hub to see how to deploy our API. And once that page loads, we can click deploy and then accelerated inference, uh, which is the name of Hugging Faces deployment platform. And we can get the details of how to call our API endpoint for this model. So you can see code for Python, JavaScript, and curl. If you have an API key already set up, then you can just click copy to clipboard and paste the curl command into your API testing tool or into your code. If you need to create an API key, you can do that by clicking your user avatar in the top right, going to settings, and then access tokens, and clicking new token. You'll then be able to use this token to invoke your API. So we're going to test our API with a tool called Insomnia. We'll create a new request, set it to type post, and then paste the generated curl command that we copied a second ago into the URL bar. And Insomnia can decode this and auto-populate a request for us. So I'll replace my default API token with the one we just created. And change the request body to a binary file and select a file from my computer and then click send. So when you first call your API, it won't be loaded and ready for inference. So if you're familiar with the cold start problem in serverless functions, this is the same sort of thing. Um, the API response will include an estimated time field, which is in seconds. So in our case, the API response is telling us that it expects our model to be ready for inference in 20 seconds. So we wait 20 seconds, we invoke it again, and we get a response. And you can see that the response includes the category probability for each of the labels that we used in training. So here you would likely want to take the label for the JSON entry where the probability is highest. And so that's it. Now our API is ready to go and we can plug it into whatever app we're developing. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you're interested in how this kind of stuff works under the hood and you would be interested in seeing a tutorial on how to build your own pipeline that automatically trains and deploys APIs, um, please let me know in the comments. It's one of the things I'm thinking about creating a tutorial on. So if you'd like to see it, please let me know. Thanks for watching.